Welcome back, Snappers, to the first ever Snapchat. I am joined by Alex here, man, and uh, I'm I'm just pumped to have you on the channel and finally do a collaboration together. What's up, man? Oh, man. you're talking about being excited. Do you have any idea how excited I am? This is incredible. Like, I, I think we, we're onto something really awesome here, and I think that, uh, I mean, I love talking about Marvel Snap. I think everyone knows that, and to speak to someone like you about it, I mean, this is a great day. A great day to be alive, I'll tell you. Oh, uh, dude. Well, if you guys want to know what the Snapchat is all about, for you guys that are sports fans, it's kind of like around the horn. We're going to have three subjects on my channel that we're going to break down about Marvel Snap, and three subjects over on Alex's channel. Uh, on my channel today, we're going to be talking about the most fun card abilities. Often we talk about the most powerful and whatnot, but I want to talk about the ones that are just pure fun. We're also going to talk about the greatest turn six closers and how important that is to get the most cubes. And then lastly, I want to talk about the best and worst locations in Marvel Snap. Uh, Alex, what will we be talking about on your channel? Uh, we're going to talk about ranked matchmaking. Uh, we're going to kind of have a discussion about like how the ranked matchmaking is currently working. Can it be improved? And then we're going to talk about the incredible free-to-play design of Marvel Snap, which I think is literally what makes this game so special right now. Everyone playing it really identifies with how good the free-to-play system is. Like, it's really remarkable how player-friendly their uh, their monetization is. And uh, we're also going to talk about, is Pool 3 too big? And we're going to talk about, in general, like, the pool system. Uh, but uh, Pool 3 is pretty damn big and we're going to talk about just how big it is yeah so guys i know deck guides are great tier lists are fun but i want to have more discussion based videos so we want to make this a weekly series uh that it's going to serve as a podcast and a video podcast we'll have visuals but you know feel free to you know just turn off the screen too if you want to just listen to our rambling uh but alex all right so let's go ahead and let's hop into our first subject today and that is going to be the most fun card abilities in marvel snap so uh, just off the rip, right? And we'll stick mainly to pool one and two, maybe a couple pool three. But off the rip, what card it may not be the best, but you find like by far the most fun to play with in the game? Okay, for me, when you say not the best, I'm glad you kind of gave me that little out because it's definitely not the best card, but I have to say more. Oh, you had it ready right off the bat. How'd you know I was going to say more? Because I was going to bring up, dude, I was going to bring up Morph 2 as a fun card to play. That's not exactly like... He's not, dude, it, again, I like to compare him to a roulette table, right? Like, you know the odds suck, but it's so fun. You have to keep playing it, man. So tell me why you like more. Okay, first of all, I want you guys to know that was not planned. Koji <laughs> is on top of things right now. That was unbelievable. But, like, uh, awesome. I, I love Morph because, like, it's just, it's just, like, it's totally out of your hands. Like, we try so hard to win our cubes, right? When you play Morph, you're just, like, you know, like, Jesus take the wheel, man. Like, it's just, like, you're just, like, letting go of the cubes and letting Morph do the work for you. You either win or lose on like morph half the time. I've morphed into like destroyer and blown my entire board yeah, up. Yeah, like, right. And that that's the thing. So, you know, on the recent tier list, he was put in the F tier just because of just yeah. the, just because the RNG, but uh and it's funny cuz people's opinions change. Like my morphs are always six cost great, you know, but uh, most are not, you know, fantastic. Uh because you play him on turn 3 and he can get pretty bad value. But I 100% I agree. I think Morph, why I had him up is he's on the top of my list of just a fun card to play. I, I'm telling you, just like like X-Mansion location, my Morph just, I, I don't know. He doesn't like me. I, I get the blades. I get the hell cows that like just discard my cards. Uh, but Morph is definitely uh, up there in a fun time. And what would you say the worst cards to Morph uh, that Morph can turn into? I mean, a destroyer. I had to experience that firsthand. Like it was, it was pretty rough. I mean, Professor X could be bad if like you're losing a lane and you play a zero three. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't play Morph all the time for that reason, but I do know actually a fun uh, interaction with Morph for those that are in pool three or have seen it. Uh, Wong here has on reveal abilities happen twice. Morph is actually going to appear twice. Or at least this has happened at least once for me. He appears twice. He only morphs once, but he shows twice. Dude, it's super. Weird. There's so many weird interactions, right? Um, yeah, there really are. So the card I wanted to bring up, and this is a pool three card, guys, but uh, this is going to be a common theme in today's episode. I like cards that are there just to like mind F your opponent. Mysterio, I, it's probably my favorite card in the game because of that. So Mysterio, when you play him, uh, he's going to be two cost five power, but he plays two other copies that are essentially worthless. But your opponent's going to look at all three of just a two zero and they don't know which one is the main 2-5. I think this is the most fun just because I love I love toying with people and having them think, uh, Alex. Do you like Mysterio? 
I, I do. I, I think he's actually low key really good in like obviously like uh, Carnage decks. Um, but like I have been debated more than once by Mysterio. Like I'm like, ah, oh, that can't be the real Mysterio. And then like sure enough, it's like two five, and I'm like, oh my god, like I can't believe I just lost that link because I guessed wrong on Mysterio. <laughs> right. It's like a it's it's pretty cool. Like it's it's a really cool like uh like as you said, like kind of like a mind game style card and uh yeah, and I mean it gives you additional reach sometimes too, like especially if you can buff the illusions. Like if you're if you're playing like uh you know, any like a blue marvel or something like that and uh Oh for sure. I mean or it's pa pretty cool. Patriot even. Yeah, I would say it's funny. I think pool one and two have more uh, kind of straightforward cards, whereas pool three is when the more fun cards come out because they're a bit more complex, uh, like Lockjaw, for example. But I, I, I think was just going to say Lockjaw is oh. my second. Oh, if I was so going to pick a second card that's fun to play, it's Lockjaw. Put down Lockjaw, throw Wasp into it, and just like just pray. Oh, right? it's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, let's go to go to the next uh, subject on today's video, and that is going to be the greatest turn six closer so alex you know that you know tubes they come often in the earlier ranks but as you kind of progress through the ranks people retreat all the time and so it's very important to win your cubes or play your biggest play on the end of turn six when the opponent feels very confident what cards do you like that you feel like are fantastic closers let's stick to pool one and two for the audience because it's a bit more new uh, of a game for them. Uh, what would you say are your favorite closers in Marvel Snap? The first is Odin. Like, Odin, you can kind of see the setup, right? Like, you, you see the White Tiger, you see the Iron Heart, like, you see Odin coming. But you can never truly expect the impact of Odin. You don't know where the White Tiger is going to go. You don't know who's going to get hit by Iron Heart. And he's a 6 8 body, right? So, like, I, I like closing with Odin because, like, it, it, it kind of puts RNG in control a little bit. But at the same time, the amount of macro skill you have to have to set up a location specifically to take advantage of, of Odin. I just I just recorded a game where, uh, you know, I, I literally played Odin mid into Medusa and Medusa is now a 2-6, okay, right? And okay, I won yeah. the lane by that extra two, right? It's like the macro side of Odin, I think, has a really high skill cap that people yep. kind of underappreciate. And it's such a good closer. It really is. Yeah, what I like about Odin, so I love him in on-reveal decks. He's a bit more predictable in those decks that you can just tell the guy's playing all on-reveal. Yeah. But what I like him in is, uh, like in this Collect Your Devil Dinosaur deck, I had Odin on top of White Queen and Agent 13, right? And you're getting more points for the collector out of nowhere, right? Like just little yeah. interactions. It doesn't always have to be all on reveal, even though those are, but it doesn't always have to be strictly that. I agree, dude. It throws people off. The the last minute Iron Hearts are just freaking ridiculous. Uh, so Odin would be definitely a solid one. What would be another one? First of all, let me also say, I'm so jealous of all your pixel variants, man. You're flexing oh, dude, these on me pretty dude, hard. I, I, I'm a big pixel, and I, I'm a big, uh, that's my, That is that your variant of choice, man? That's like, that's my go-to. I grew up in there. I go, I, I only have a few. I, I have a couple, but I do love them. Like, I have the Angela pixel variant. I loved, I have the, I had the Bishop one, and uh, I also, I have, actually, White Tiger has a beautiful one, too. Oh. And I have the Wong one that you have, so that one's always, Wong's always in pixel when I have Wong in my deck. Oh, yeah, so. for sure. I, I grew up, man, in the in the prime era. I love just, like, the 64-bit the yeah. kind of, or the 16-bit, whatever it is. Uh, but, uh, cool. What would be your next card, bud? Closer. All right, so I know this is going to be taking people by surprise because you expect me to say something really fancy. Okay. But the number of times I've taken people by surprise with Hulk... Hulk? I'm not. I'm not lying. With Hulk, listen. Let's so go. hear me out here. By, by the way, so another, another pixel variant. So Hulk, okay. Literally, you you play Iron Man, and then like they're just like okay, but like this is a six twelve. Yeah. Like can we can we just respect the fact that this is a twelve a big man. power card. It's a big boy, yeah. Right. Like, so like people often don't really appreciate. They're like, huh? Okay. The guy they'll be like, oh, I'm up by ten. So if he Chavez's, I still win. They never account for Hulk coming in for twelve. Dude, I almost I actually never. agree. I, and it's funny. I don't run Hulk a lot. I feel like I run him in Jubilee decks. I run him in Hella decks. If you don't have, you know, those higher yeah. cost cards, you're right. I I really don't expect twelve. I calculate a lot of Iron Man every now and then, and maybe Chavez. But dude, when the twelve hits you, you're done. Like it could just it's a location winner. And unlike Infinite, right? Like you, you just don't expect him coming because there's no like indication i like it i think that's a that's a sleeper pick for yeah especially cool like if iron man's there that's a 24 play Dude, like, you know what i mean ridiculous yeah i know and good luck beating 24 especially in pool one and two um so yeah. mine too what again kind of on the same subject of what you just said uh and again i did this i swear this wasn't planned i have another pixel uh but uh, but <laughs> mine is uh mine is spectrum man i so cards for me good closers uh viewers in my opinion are cards that take your opponent 
by surprise, right? Complete surprise. Spectrum, to me, I like her better than Onslaught because you can set up a lane with, you know, Lizard and Punisher and Ant-Man and kind of leave it to be. And your opponent thinks it's one. And then they're not gonna they're not gonna commit to that lane anymore. And then you play Spectrum, and all of a sudden you got like another six, eight power on the location. I've won more matches and I've climbed more with any other deck than uh, legit anything than ongoing uh, myself. Uh, so Spectrum's a big love for me. Do you like ongoing decks that much, uh, Alex? It's one of my favorite, actually. Like the Wong Spectrum combo is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, I actually often had been playing like Wong on five because like there was a period of time where Cosmo was like being spiced in everyone's deck when yeah. everyone was playing Hella, and so like everyone else was playing Hella discard decks, and I'm like, I, I just want to play my like my, my on reveal deck, right? Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. Not my on reveal, my ongoing deck, I should say. And so yeah, I I've climbed many many a cubes with uh, with Spectrum, one of my favorite cards in the game. Yeah. Well, no Pixel variant this time, uh, but I gotta talk. Okay, listen, I know move decks. The comments are coming. It's they're they're not the the meta right now. But I'm telling you, Heimdall comes out of nowhere for a closer in this game. Like, he, especially if you don't play him in a full dedicated move deck, I like Heimdall. I think he completely throws the opponent off. I think he's very good. If you can set it up, he's very, very solid. Don't play him a lot right now. Uh, you know, I know new cards are coming that are more move deck favored. Uh, but man, Heimdall, hell of a closer, right? Yo, absolutely. Like, no one can really anticipate Heimdall. Like, you can't really... How do I say this? Like, like, what do you really do to, to like to counter Heimdall? Because like, they don't have to commit to playing Heimdall either, no. and you really don't know what lane's getting the eight power. Exactly. Like, there's so much. Like, when you know, even if you know he's coming, you're still kind of scared. Like, that's that's an incredible card. When you're like, huh, this is a move deck. He's gonna Heimdall, yeah, but like, where's he gonna drop this Heimdall? Like, what's gonna happen? That's the thing, right? I think move decks, obviously, they're not doing the best right now. But I think that yeah. like. I think they'll be the meta pretty soon. Uh, like once new cards come out because of that, because of the amount they can throw off and the deception and the deceit that they have behind them. Uh, yeah, so big time uh, Heimdall, huge closer. Those would be the main four. I mean, there's more Onslaught's great guys, but those would be the four that I would probably bring up as my my favorite closers. And the other thing I'd add about yeah, yeah. The, the move decks too is that like they're really hard to pilot. Like, from a macro standpoint, I think they're amongst the most challenging decks to pilot properly. Like, you will throw games because you push guys out of winning positions. Yeah. Like, oh. you, you really have to practice those decks. And any player that, like, just tries a move deck at first and, like, doesn't succeed and gives up right away, like, you really have to commit to, like, learning the macro side of move decks. And then you start to really appreciate what Heimdall's capable of. And I like that you said that you don't even have to play him in move decks. He's, like, the ultimate yeah. debate card. He yeah. really is, right? It You've got to play with a deck more than a couple of times. Like, this game is not like, yeah. oh, this deck doesn't work. You could have bad RNG. You could play a deck that just happens to, to play better. Locations, card pulls. There's so much that goes into it. And then just learning how to do it effectively and learning combos and whatnot. Uh, so I agree. Move decks take some time. Uh, but I know players that are consistently winning even in pool three with move decks. So I like the, the, the statement there, Alex. Um, let's go to our last subject, bud. Best and worst locations. Now, I ran a poll, and uh, dude, I, this is this isn't gonna be a tough question. All right, um, and, and and viewers, comment down below before you hear this what the worst location in the game is. Alex, take a stab. What do you think got sixty five percent of ten thousand votes for the worst location in the game? I almost would guarantee that if we were to say it at the same time, we say the same one. All right, three, two, one. Subterranean. Subterranean. Oh, uh, well, it was close enough at the same time. We have to work. We can't go Christmas caroling or anything later. But, uh, all right. Yeah, dude, Subterranean. It's, it's, it's we sub got it. Subterranean is awful. It's, it's so horrible, bad. dude. It, it's the only location in the game that I think adds legit no value. Like, nothing. It doesn't make it yeah. more fun, more it, 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 no strategy. It, it just is like, hey, do you have worse RNG than your opponent, right? um so subterranean by far i think we could both agree with the worst we won't talk about it you know too long uh i will admit that i have on occasion just retreated when subterranean comes up oh dude especially if like your first two pulls are rocks you're like all right okay gg this was yeah. fun yeah take my cube yeah I'm it'll out. come up and you'll pull the rock like right away it's like okay, yeah you're like guys, cool not running just, and then they have like a destroy deck you're like fantastic all right i'm gonna yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna move on uh um, or patriot yeah exactly so yeah. what is what would you say is another location you just not a fan yeah, you just you hate. You're not a fan. X Mansion have to. I, I don't like it. I don't like X Mansion at all. Uh, the hub I don't mind because at least you get the card in your hand. And you have to commit the mana to play. X Mansion is like, hey, cool. I got Blade. 
and they're like, hey, check out my Infinod. Like, it sounds like a meme, but like, it's going to be a short that hits my channel at some point. Dude, who, I want to know who runs my mansion. I swear to God, if whoever's running my X mansion is just garbage. They're like, mm, let's give them a, a, an Electro with no one cost on the other side. And then they're like, mm, a Hulk, like on the other side, every time. Okay. Best or er, best locations. And I have one that I think is not common. I asked this on my tier list video. I got overwhelming people saying Bar Sinister. I don't know if that's because it was the most recent one. Very fun. It's a very fun location. What would be your favorite or amongst the best locations? Okay, so my favorite, I like Nova Roma just because I want to draw another card, but that's a cheap. I, I'm, like, we can't talk. We, like, what do you say about Nova Roma? Everyone gets a card, everyone <laughs> yeah, loves drawing. Yeah. But, like, actually, in terms of like design space wise, I like how do you not love Sinister London? Oh. Like, how do you not love Sinister that's London? So good. Because it favors every card, ongoing, on reveal. Like, you can have favor yeah. for each deck it's not camartage it's not like onslaught citadel 100 percent and I, there's like yes. an element to it too of like macro strategy okay like if i just put one and two and three drops in there then like when i have my huge plays on five and six i can't use that space appropriately yeah so like there's a macro kind of way like i like locations that amplify strategy and i think that sinister london actually does that because you got to also bear in mind, like, if you play a Squirrel Girl there, you're going to eat the entire board space. Or, like, Sunspot, double Sunspots, and they both get the energy. They sh it's oh, a beautiful, yeah. Money. Yeah. Love Sinister London. Uh, I would say, okay, this one's a little different, man. But, again, it's going back to the head games. And I don't think anyone would say this. I think New York is a fantastic uh, location. And, and I'll tell you what. I love the turn six. Where if you see New York, guys, the, usually the best thing to do is not play there all the time. Maybe have a little bit of a base, maybe Ant-Man that you can move to later. So New York, you can move cars on turn six. I love that because you're winning, let's say, one location. The opponent's winning the other. And you're both like, how much do I send over to New York to try <laughs> to try to win it? And I've been on opposite ends. Uh, I've, I've tried to not move any cards and, and be like, all right, they're never going to you know guess this. But I kind of like the meta game in the meta game per se. Uh, do, do you like that aspect? It's so funny you say that because every time New York's up, I'm just like, Nah, he can go there. I'll stay here. <laughs> yeah, he's so, gonna, he's gonna screw up. He's gonna send too much over there. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Fantastic. I, yeah, it's just I like the mind games of it, which is why I like move decks and stuff. But yeah, Sinister London, Bar Sinister, and then obviously like Kamar and, and Onslaught. They're a ton of fun. I think Bar with No Name has a little bit of fun to it as well like the, the one where it's the, the least power wins because it's just like this weird kind of hosh i love playing like scarlet witch turn five six there and they just like you ruin their whole yeah. strategy uh any other last locations that uh best or worst yeah or? actually it just hit my head it's for the worst um can we talk about central park throwing squirrels everywhere the stupid ninjas that pop out from i can't remember what it was called the and those savage raptors the savage are they kind of just doing the same thing it's so annoying I just, like the guard when it fills garbage on your side of the board i don't play destroy decks very often i'm always like oh great now i just lose so i love that all right so those were the best and worst locations comment down below uh all three subjects guys uh what do you think is the most fun card in the game what do you think is the best and worst locations and lastly what do you think are the best closers within the game guys hopefully you liked the format of the first ever snapchat uh again my three topics were here the other three are going to be on over to alex's channel uh and man alex again i'm just i'm pumped to do more content with you and thank you so much for for coming on here today bud oh thank you for having me are you kidding me I, I couldn't be more excited hell yeah and in the future guys we're gonna do a lot more creativity with this whole entire segment comment down below as well like what kind of subjects you would like us to talk about and uh, until that next video and until the next weekly series of the snapchat you guys have a good luck snapping and alex any closing words oh just uh keep snapping go for those eight cubes all right guys peace out